When the Dart Zone Pro Mark II was announced via a really cryptic looking video that didn't show off more than the fact it was a pistol with an internal magazine and speed loaders, I was pretty cautious because while it was a pistol, I was a little scared because I wasn't a big fan of the Dart Zone Pro itself. This blaster though completely changes just about everything for me because I think it's one of the best pistol blasters in the entire hobby. Now I know those are some pretty crazy claims and I've been known to make some pretty crazy claims. But the thing with the Dark Zone Pro Mark II is that it just is so freaking good. And if this does not look very appealing to you, maybe this will. A six round internal grip fed magazine pistol that hits about 150 FPS on a good day. I love the Dart Zone Pro Mark II, but let's explain why. Now before we get too far into this video, I should note that this blaster was sent to me for review from Dart Zone themselves, and I thank them very much for that. Otherwise, it is an $80 blaster, and $80 for something like this may seem pretty excessive at first, but I should tell you that before anything else about the blaster, it is extremely high quality. This thing probably couldn't exist as anything else other than what it already is. Now, what the heck do I mean by that? Well, the fact is, the materials and construction probably wouldn't lend itself to anything like 3D printing and what have you, because this has no fat left to trim on it whatsoever. They packed as much power and functionality they could into the smallest possible package. Right out of the gate, the blaster hits anywhere from about a 120 to a 150 FPS mark, depending on what darts you use. And there is a problem that's preventing it from hitting further, which we will talk about towards the end of the video. But everything from the priming weight, which is heavy, but completely manageable and far less than you would expect for something of this size and this power, to the silky smooth internal magazine feeding, which is one of the easiest I've ever seen in a blaster like this, far beyond anything from Nerf with such things with things like the DL44, the Ray Blaster and stuff like that. It is stupidly easy to put a dart in here to the lockup. With the blaster primed and ready to go, there is barely any wiggle whatsoever. The entire thing feels about as solid as it could get. And it makes a satisfying little pop sound. Ergonomically, the blaster is a dream. It has a nice contour for where your trigger finger meets the trigger. It's got a decently sized grip, which is perfect for me. And it's wide enough that if you have much bigger hands, it should fit you rather comfortably. There is a good chunk of the blaster that goes over behind your wrist, but it isn't enough to really get in the way or matter. There's one tactical rail on the front of the blaster, which is Picatinny compatible and will work with, and will work with any Picatinny accessory that would fit there. I put this laser sight on it for my regular handgun because why not? And it fit perfectly and worked perfectly. A good example of something to use for that would be a flashlight. But I can't state this enough. This blaster is small. I don't think there is a blaster that is this compact, this powerful, with this amount of capacity in the entire hobby. Here is the lovable hammer shot. It's a $15 blaster. This is an $80 package. We'll talk about that too. But as you can see, while they may be roughly the same length if you really try, although the hammer shot is significantly longer, the Dart Zone Pro Mark II is much thinner and with one additional capacity and like three times the power. 
It's even come down to the fact that this thing has a metal barrel and metal grip plates on the side of the blaster that make it feel exceptionally good in the hand. But the $80 price tag for the Dart Zone Pro Mark II is a package deal. You don't get just the blaster, and at the moment, this is the only way you can get the blaster. But the entire package contains two speed loaders, a speed loader-like assembly that can be pre-filled and then reload your blaster quicker, a holster that fits on a belt for those speed loaders, a holster for the actual blaster itself, 18 of the Dart Zone Pro bamboo darts, and this thing. I, uh... It's a thing. I don't really know immediately what the point of it is other than to make it look like Robocop's Auto 9, but it should be noted that with this on the blaster, it is exceptionally easier to aim with, especially if you're trying to hit something at a longer range, which this blaster obviously is capable of hitting. Which is a really nice inclusion, because not only is the Dart Zone Pro a very capable sidearm or secondary blaster to have paired with a much more capable primary blaster, but it's also capable of being a primary blaster itself. This is one of the few times I see a primary capable pistol in the hobby, and what do I mean about primary capable pistol? Well, for that, I have to talk about Call of Duty. The TAC-45 in Call of Duty Black Ops 2 is a pistol that had a two-hit kill rate, which isn't normal for pistols in Call of Duty. When most assault rifles and SMGs and what have you have a three-hit kill range, that meant the pistol actually did have a purpose beyond just being a sidearm. It was actually one of the faster-killing weapons at a close range, and yet it was still, at longer ranges, a five- to six-hit kill, which meant it wasn't super good at long range, but could still be used as long as you got the first shots, but at close range, it was an absolute monster. And unfortunately, not many games do that anymore, but that did mean that pistols in Black Ops 2 were capable primary weapons if you were comfortable with their flaws and if you could excel at the ranges they were good with. It's a blaster that fills all of the roles of being both a sidearm with its compact size and relative usability, but also is capable of being a primary while having the pros and cons of both. And it should be noted with something this small and this powerful, there is of course a crossbar safety on the blaster that completely blocks the trigger from engaging any kind of catch or anything like that, so you can't accidentally fire it when you don't mean to. The Dart Zone Pro Mark II hits hard. It will hit as hard as your stock Dart Zone Pro or Nexus Pro or anything like that at a much smaller compact size. It also has a six round internal magazine that is easy to top up on the field, but it does not use detachable magazines. However, because of that, it's incredibly easy to holster and keep on your gear at all times. And when running around, aiming around cover or anything like that, the Dart Zone Pro is going to be much more effective because it doesn't have any kind of magazine getting in the way and you don't expose yourself much past the actual cover you're aiming beyond. With a big bright orange barrel on the front of this thing, it's really easy to paint your targets with it and it's much easier at range to get a feel for when you're actually aiming at the target because you have again this big bright orange muzzle on the front of it which is incredibly easy to sight your target over it's not impossible with just the standard setup in fact it does have iron sights which are pretty good but at that point you're actually doing more aiming than feeling and in nerf that can lead to some complications and some missed shots it should be noted that there is absolutely no tactical advantage beyond that i didn't see any kind of increase or really any decrease in velocity with something like this it doesn't effectively elongate your barrel or muffle your shots or anything like that it is really just a piece of plastic that makes it much easier to aim with at the cost of making your blaster longer. The velocity numbers with the Dart Zone Pro Mark II are some of the most exciting I've seen. Something this big with a six round internal magazine hits almost 150 FPS. Now there is a problem that I will get into very shortly, but that is really good. I, even if it only hits around the 120, 130, which I've seen multiple times with this blaster with the included darts, it's still very good, but if you switch to the Adventure Force Pro Darts, not only can it get hotter on the higher end, but it can also hit lower, and I figured out why that is. Many of the time, depending on what dart I use, the dart would just fall out the barrel. Kind of like that. It wasn't a gradual fall, but it would fling right out. And you can kind of see that where it's a little, it, it grips it a little bit, but not enough to really matter. And one of the first things you want to do that'll probably give you a lot more power out of this blaster is putting in a different barrel, like a brass barrel or something like that, because it really, really needs it. The included speed loaders with the blaster work surprisingly well. They're not perfect, but they do engage with the blaster really nicely. They 
lock into place almost like they're meant to be there, and it's really just the feeding into the internal magazine that is a little bit bumpy. For some reason, feeding darts from the included speed loader into the grip-fed magazine is a little bit less smooth than just putting darts in there manually. It, sometimes they even get caught up and don't fully go in there. I'm not quite sure why, but, but it's something that rarely happens, and I've fired a couple hundred shots through this thing, and I've only had it happen like twice. Just like with the Blaster's internal six round magazine, the speed loaders hold six darts each, and you get two of them and a nice holster for both of them, which works surprisingly well. It is built in such a way that you can't accidentally pull the follower down or anything like that, and darts can't magically come out the bottom of the holster. Speaking of which, there's also a holster for the blaster itself, as long as you have nothing on the front of the blaster, no Picatinny accessory, and no muzzle brake, that again, feels really nice and works surprisingly well. Covers the blaster's trigger, so there's no way you could accidentally fire it, the muzzle is completely protected and everything like that. It has three adjustable position points on it. Both holsters are made of a nice rubbery kind of plastic, which feels really durable and rather flexible so hopefully they should last you quite some time and it's specifically made for these speed loaders and this blaster. Would it be nice to be able to pick up the Dart Zone Pro Mark II without all the extra stuff if you didn't want it, just the powerful little compact pistol unit? Yes, yes it would be. But even at $80, there is some kind of market for that because it already comes with a holster and everything, even holsters for the speed loaders, which is something that you don't normally get with blasters, which if you don't already have tactical gear, it will just fit on a belt. And that does give you some tactical gear and gives you an experience with tactical gear, which is something a lot of you may not already have. And it may lead you down a dark and dreary path of getting even more tactical gear. But even past all of that, I feel like the Dart Zone Pro Mark II is a pretty good value. Not an excellent value, mind you. It's still made out of plastic, although it's really thick, really durable, really nice plastic. It's still a plastic, like ABS or something like that. And the included accessories are really nice, work fine, but they're not going to blow you away in their quality. But what I will say is that if you do buy one of these, I don't think you're going to be disappointed because this thing feels amazing to use, is stupidly powerful, and it's almost black magic how they managed to get this much stuff into a blaster this small. Seriously, you'd probably never see me ever use a Dart Zone Pro Mark I or Mark 1.1. I have absolutely no interest in that because I have so many other pump-action magazine-fed blasters. I'm also more of a fan of pistols, and I will forgive the six-round internal magazine for only having six rounds when I can easily top it up after every single tag. If I need to fire more than six shots, I've obviously done something wrong. And having something that powerful and something that is very easy to keep on my person and out of the way and still be completely competent, yeah, I like that. I value that higher than pretty much anything. As long as it hits the velocity, I am happy. If it has an internal magazine, that's even better. And it's a good thing it has that internal magazine because that way it differs itself from other blasters that you could be using. Your primary and your secondary aren't fighting each other for ammo at that point, and it works even better as a sidearm because you can scavenge ammo for it and still be able to keep yourself in the fight. And the Dart Zone Pro Mark II just happens to do pretty much everything perfectly. That barrel is a bit of a missed opportunity. I kind of feel like they either toned the blaster down to keep it under 150 FPS normally, or it was a slight oversight in engineering because everything else about the blaster is amazing. But I'm fine with that because a barrel is a very easily replaceable thing for somebody like me and probably you because you could just go get a piece of brass and, and swap out the barrel and it's just as good. I look at a lot of pistols on this channel. Pistols are my thing. I like small, compact, powerful things and it's even better when they can be used as a primary. It may not have the ammo variation of something like the Breaking Wind. It may not have the fire rate of something like the Lepis. It may not have the pump action magazine fedness of a Spamp with a Super Spamp grip on it. But if you want an even bigger reason of why I like this blaster, here's the Aeon Pro. This is a pretty sweet little package, especially for $25, and hits the same velocities, if not a little bit higher, than an Art Zone Pro Mark II, but it's magazine fed and everything like that. However, it's more than double the size. Probably triple, because it's also way thicker and everything. Some of you may think, well, why would I ever use this when I have one of these? And that's perfectly acceptable. But for me, why would I ever use this when I have something like this? I like this a heck of a lot more because it's like one third the size, hits basically the same numbers as an internal magazine, so I don't have to worry about external ones and I can still top this one up very easily. And with how this slide and everything is built on this, I'm sure somebody's gonna make a pump action kit for it, which, you know what, I'm, I'm actually waiting for because I'm sure you can actually make something that works on this Picatinny rail that will prime this blaster back and just be this tiny little pump action thing. 
I'm cool with that. It's gonna make it bigger, but that might be more optimal than anything else for me. But I'm gushing at this point. I love the Dart Zone Pro Mark II, and if you understand why, then maybe you should pick one up as well. I will have a link to Target.com down in the description below, which is, as far as I know, the only place you can get the blaster right now. That being said, orders went up yesterday, it sold out, then it went back up, and I don't know if it sold out from that backup. So if it is sold out, just keep kind of checking back. It will come back in stock eventually. There is a high demand for this, which I don't know why I'm trying to sell it to you because most people are already buying them anyway. And honestly, I'm not even really trying to sell it to you. I'm just trying to tell you why I like mine so much. I have a feeling the Dart Zone Pro Mark II is gonna be my best friend for quite some time. But let me know what you think about the Dart Zone Pro Mark II. Did I miss something? Or do you have a good reason why you would never ever touch one? I'd love to get your feedback on that. But otherwise, I'm Walkama7. If you watched all the way to the end, like maybe 3% of you do, make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, because we have a lot more coming. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different video. You got